Hello, welcome to Fibertown. This is episode 156. What's the date today? Is it the 7th? No, it's the 8th of June, 2016. Let me write this date on my show notes. Welcome everyone, I'm so glad you're here. Um, yes, thank you for coming back if you are a returning viewer and if you're new, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Emily, and I'm Chain of Fools on Ravelry, and Instagram, my name is Fibertown, with an R-E. Sometimes I need to have more coffee. I am not outside or on my porch today. It's super windy. I hope the audio is not impacted by that. Um, it's a lovely day. I'm just, excuse me while I put my hair up, I'm just kind of thinking about how my son is going to be doing... Uh, in this very windy, cold weather and dive team tonight when he has practice. He's going to freeze, the poor little guy. Um, that is neither here nor there. I am here to talk about fiber things. I have so much to show you guys. From acquisitions and FOs and works in progress and spinning and events. And Alice will probably show up at some point. And if you haven't met Alice, I think you will later. All right, so, you guys, we have a winner. The May Knit Along, uh, the word was, what was the word? Friends. Um, the winner of that was number six on the FO thread, or FO and chatter, and that is Allison Rose Boom. Allison Rose Boom. Let me show you what you won. You won your choice of beautiful yarns given to me by friends. Um, and I'm ready to let them go to another friend. In this case, it's you, Allison Roseboom. Do you want the Hazelnuts Artisan Sock in the Coveralls colorway? Gorgeous. Um, or the Vesper Super Special Signature Stripe Plus One Exclusive colorway from April 2011. Um, this is the Gemstone colorway. Let me know what you want when you hear this, and I will send it out to you. Let's see. Uh, this month we have the free along and FOs and chatter has started. Um, as always, I'm excited to see how you guys interpret the word of the month. Free is this, um, this month's and I'm thinking June is the end of school, you're free for the summer. You could do something literature related. Um, I think I gave as an example, Dobby is a free elf. Maybe if you're knitting some Harry Potter inspired yarn and now I'm looking at my lipstick thinking, it is not applied well. It could be a shadow. Um, really anything. Knitting, crochet, weaving, sewing. Spinning, of course. So I look forward to seeing what you make. And let me show you what the prize is this month. Okay. My lovely flan friend. Friend um, Claire from the Woolly Thistle on Etsy has sent me generously two skeins from her shop. This amazing colorway, which I am currently knitting. This is the West Yorkshire Spinners um, uh, signature four ply in their cocktail line, which is brand new. This is the passion fruit cooler, passion fruit something. Um, unfortunately, they don't put the name on their ball pants, just a number, but they do have a name on the website. So um, this one is passion fruit. Oh, and I think last week I showed one um, and I called it peacock. It is not peacock, although I think that colorway exists. It was a blue, it was called Blue Lagoon, and that's another cocktail. Who knew? Anyway, and then she also donated this amazing skein of Tamar. I know. This is a very special yarn. It's a luster blend. Oh, it feels amazing. This colorway is Tresselian, and that's, that's a better representation of the color, right there. This is, uh, let's see, how many, how many yards in here? 380 yards, four ply, it's a fingering weight. I think it, oh, they also make Tamar in a DK weight. Um, and she has both of these, she has this one in her shop currently. This one is coming soon, I think. Oh, excuse me. The wind is blowing around a lot of stuff. <clears throat> anyway, Tamar is a blend of all sorts of amazing long wools, British long wools, so it gets that luster. You can see. 
Um, and then it's mixed with Cornish mule, which is a sheep that has more poof and sproing, which the long wools do not have. Um, so it's an amazing yarn. I'm about to cast on a sweater in Tamar. And she also, I'm going to show you more, more Tamar later on. Thank you, Claire. And go to the Wooly Thistle to find out um, when this is coming in. And you can also, she has amazing blacker yarns. And she's um, Scottish. And she has decided to import a lot of these yarns that, you know, previously you could only order from overseas. So yay. So Wooly is with two L's, Wooly Thistle. And I linked to her shop, I think in my last episode, and if I remember, I'll link again. If I don't remember, just ear burn me, message me. So those two, the winner of the free along, will get both skeins from the Wooly Thistle. Cheers. All right, let's look at FOs. Where to start first? Yes, here. Speaking of West Yorkshire spinners, I finished these socks. This is um, one of the, their bird collection. This is the Mallard colorway. I just love these. I just love knitting with this yarn. I cannot tell you how much. This is the second pair in a row of West Yorkshire spinners I've made. And I have a third on the needles. So um, the coordinating heels, toes, and cuffs is Queensland Rustic. And now, Ravelry is telling me that this yarn is an Aran weight. And I think that's completely wrong. Um, you know, I got this from Two Rivers Yarns in Purcellville. Is it Purcellville? I think it's Purcellville, Virginia. And it was in her fingering and sport weight room. So she probably knows that it's not an Aran weight. It's like, she was saying it's four or the ball band says it's four to five stitches per inch. Now I'm talking about this, okay? So this is the end of my West Yorkshire Spinners, which is definitely a fingering. And this is the Rustic Tweed. Now, does that look, I'm using the same needle size, same, same stitch count. It is bigger, true, but that is not an Aran weight yarn. Anyway, um, for the toe decreases, I did, you know how you, on a general um, toe, it's not a rounded toe, it's just your generic um, toe, I don't know which the technical term is. Usually knit a stitch when you're decreasing, knit a stitch, decrease, and then knit to the, to the end of the needle and do your other decrease and then knit one last stitch. In this case, I have been doing um, knit two, then a decrease, and then knit to uh, four stitches before the end, decrease, and then knit two. So I find that really eliminates this laddering I was sometimes getting, especially towards the top of the toe, um, just because I guess the decreases were too close to the end of the needle. Um, these are on 64 stitches on the leg, and then um, on the foot it's 68. These are for my husband who has skinny Spanish calves, and then a bigger foot. Um, and I do about, he wears a, a US size nine and a half, and I do about 10 more rows than I do for my socks. I also did, um, when I began the decreases, I, I did two, the first two decreases, I did two plain rows, then a decrease, two plain rows, then a decrease, and then I began decreasing every other row. So, so yeah, so what I do is my riverbed gusset, and instead of decreasing down to two stitches um, between the markers, and if you're curious about this, look at the Breaking Heart sock pattern, or any of my sock patterns, they all use this, um, and I learned this technique from the Breaking Heart sock pattern, which is an amazing sock pattern. Christy Payne wrote it, um, and it just fits my foot super well, it fits my family's feet super well. Um, I get to do the heel flap, which I find is very hard wearing. I never wear out my, my socks on the heel um, or on the bottom bottom of my heel or the heel flap. Where I do wear them out is on the ball of my foot. Um, so how I managed the picking up stitches here is, you know, because I had 
you can see here on this one, I have a little bit, I did a little bit too much. So basically, um, I finished knitting the leg, I changed to the white yarn, the accent yarn, do the heel flap and the heel turn, and then I start picking up gusset, gusset stitches in this sort of variegated stamped yarn. And the way I do that is I usually pull out a bit, a little nugget of yarn till I get to, so here we, we ended in brown, and I knew I was gonna need um, <clears throat> double the amount of this. So I knitted what comes after the brown, which is generally about two rows. See that on a, on a typical on a typical round of 64 or 68 stitches. And then when I got to the end of that, I pulled out a whole repeat of colorways, which is like a little nugget, and then did a little bit extra of this so that it looked like, I did a better job here, see? So it looks like two rows. So just a little yarn management. It doesn't use up too much yarn, and then you have a little mini skein. I think I have pretty much talked about everything to do with these, except the fact that I knit them on Addy Sock Rockets, US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters. Um, oh, one other thing I do. I sometimes decrease on the riverbed, on the riverbed, on the bottom of the foot. And let me take one of these off to show you. You've probably seen these before. These are my Boston Terrier um, sock blockers by Judy Banducci, who generously gave these to me and made them herself. There's a little Alice. Um, so the riverbed gusset is basically, you do your decreases on the bottom of the foot right there. And it makes a lovely V that hugs the arch of your foot. The arch of my foot, anyway. Did I say these are for my husband for Father's Day? The lucky guy. Now, um, as I was saying, so I do decreases here. Occasionally, if I have to pick up, if I've made a longer than usual heel flap for, or whatever, usually I'm picking up 15 stitches along the edge of each side. But if for some reason I feel like I need to pick up more stitches along the gusset, like I've made a longer gusset. Um, in this case, I picked up 18 on each side. Then I also do two decreases at the traditional gusset decrease places. I don't know if you can even see them, but there's some, there are two decreases in this area. So I get a little, it snugs in in two places, which I really like. Love these. I have the owl colorway as well in the birds line. I'd like to get the blue tit as well. Just fun to say. Um, a little coffee. Okay, so my other two items are my other two FOs are sewn items. And let me show you the first one. This is, I think, one of the weirdest things I've made in quite a while, and will most likely get ripped out. Okay, it's a very weird project bag. This should have been a much smaller project bag, but I was hesitant to cut into, this is my own weaving. Um, this was bobbin ends collected over a year in a jar and then two plied. So just whatever is left after a spin that I don't want to use up, that I don't feel like it's enough. Um, yeah, so it's totally different on both sides. Um, and then I had this, this is the longest zipper, or this is the only zipper that pretty much matched the length of the fabric, I didn't want to cut into um, the selvage edges. So that's why it's this length or this size. There's the interior. I have no idea what I would put in this. It's, it's a really bizarre size. I am disinclined, however, to rip it out. I think that'd be a disaster. I don't know. It's nice and padded. It has some interfacing. And of course, it's, it's weaving. This was a scarf that I decided I didn't like, and I wanted to practice sewing with my weaving. So, so I did. I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe spindles. Maybe if I'm traveling, I'll, I'll take my, the summer, maybe I'll travel and put my spindles in here. Because there's room for quite a few, and I like to take quite a few with me when I travel. The other pseudo FO is my quilt top and I definitely need more coffee before I talk about this. This thing has almost killed me this week. It's 
taught me a lot. It's taught me two very important things. And those are, oh, the shadows are coming in. Those are that I can neither cut straight nor sew straight. Also, I can't put the colors in the right order. So this is the, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Bargello quilt. And I found this tutorial on the Let's, oh gosh, what's it called? Let's quilt something. Let me just double check. On a blog, I think it's called Let's Quilt, yes. Let's Quilt Something Blogspot.com. Where is the top? So you get this sort of optical illusion going on. You cut strips. You sew strips of a jelly roll, and I use Robert Kaufman. I'm gonna have to stand up. Robert Kaufman Kona Cotton. So there's the beginning. You sew strips together, you make a tube out of your strips, you sew the tube together, um, and then you cut strips of varying widths. And there's the beginning, and this is about how wide it is. Boom. And then you stagger them. You cut the tubes into these widths, and then you undo the tube you can see right here it goes this color is sort of checkerboarding down and what happens I don't know if you can see is when you're looking at it you do get a sort of an optical illusion um, you go in and out as far as the, the widths of the squares and I'm gonna just show you a picture of this thing it's a lot easier to see so and that maybe I can explain a little bit better what happened it's all right. This is what it looks like. Um, the sewing is quite curved in places, and I realized that I ended up cutting diamonds instead of squares. And I think it has to do with the fact that I don't really know how to square up fabric, especially when it's in a tube. And the, the, the butt of the tube does not want to, it doesn't want to square up. So I'm just jumping into these things like, oh, that looks cool. I could probably do that. And I don't know the arcane wisdom that goes into quilting. Um, but I'm starting to discover what I don't know. I, I think the consequence of my, and you could see when I showed you that, you saw all that ripping out. The second jelly roll, I did not sew the greens together in the same order that I had done the first jelly roll. And I thought that I had just taking them off the jelly roll as they came, perhaps they were packaged differently in the factory. Perhaps I was just not looking. So I had to rip out a bunch of seams and had some unhappy moments there. And I haven't cleaned up the seams yet with all the excess thread. So now I'm gonna to have to square everything off. And I, the consequence, as I was saying, of me not cutting straight or measuring straight I learned a lot about measuring. You think it's very straightforward? It's really not, um, at least for me. So the consequence is that I'm going to have to cut off significant amounts of edging. Look at that, look at the difference between the beginning and <laughs> as we go along. I'm gonna lose colors. I still think it'll be big enough. So yeah, on to the whatever comes next. The basting. Oh, that's no fun. We'll see. It's gorgeous. I'm happy with how it looks mostly. Um, it's just been a challenge. Okay. Works in progress. And before we do that, let's open up the treat jar and see if Alice comes. Hear a little tippy tap? Do you want a cookie? Do you want to come say hi and have a cookie? Come here. Come. Oh, now, Alice is wearing her thunder shirt because this wind kind of makes her anxious. Come sit down. You hear the wind? It's very windy. All right, lovely. All right, lovely. 
Wait, can you sh can you give me your paw? What a good girl. All right, maybe you'll sit on my lap for a while and chat. See the people? People like to see you. So this does make her, before I put this on, she was shaking. Shaking like a leaf. She's like, it's not thunderstorming. Why do I feel like this? And it's just atmospheric conditions make her weird. Um, so this is a very, uh, very comfy Jersey thunder shirt. Gets a lot of use in the summer with our practically daily thunderstorms. Awesome. All right, little peanut. Okay, um, works in progress. I have a sock on the needles. Same socks, uh, our same needles as before. West Yorkshire spinners. This is the giveaway, one of the giveaway yarns for this month. Isn't this gorgeous? This is the passion fruit. There we go. Same typical sock. I started this two days ago. Um, it's gotten a little bit of knitting, pretty much just at dive practice. I love passion fruit. I love these colors together. It's awesome. It's in my Holland Handmaid's bag. This is not as easy as I thought it would be, Alice. In fact, I think you're gonna have to go away. See you later, Nugget. There you go. Okay. My Pincha. This is, I told you the name of the designer last time. Oh gosh. I'm gonna have to do it again because this lady is a genius. She deserves to have her name said. Let's see. Pincha Pincha is a knitty pattern. It is by, I really don't have much progress on it. Pin Palan Wang Sai. Knitting these on US sixes. These are my signatures, my one and only pair of signatures. I am mid-feather over here. I think I'm working on feather number eight. Five, six, yes. This is another crafty girl in the gamut colorway. It's a fingering base. So hard to photograph. I've been taking a lot of pictures on uh, Instagram of this particular project, and it never photographs the same way twice. Um, love it. I really love this. I think it's going to be stunning when it's done. I really have to focus on it. As I've said before, the knitting is, it's not hard. It's just, you have to, you have to focus. There's no way around it. Um, I thought I could knock out a feather last night when I was sitting at poolside. Nope. Oh, was a lot of ripping. <laughs> love this thing. Another crafty girl is going to be at SSK, and I'm going to be at SSK. Love it. So my last work in progress is my threshold. That is a Melanie Berg sweater pattern, and I'm knitting this out of Hazel Knits, Artisan Sock, and the Big Wheel. There's the next one. You see there's some wavy yarn on that. <sighs> That's because I had to rip out... About half a sleeve. Some I somehow managed to decrease too many stitches. I don't know how. I still don't know how. And frankly, I'm not interested in trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah. This is the sleeve. What was I going to say about this yarn? I love this sweater. Um, this, this is the second big wheel. The first big wheel it had some issues towards the end of the skein. And you might see, this is the inside of the sweater, especially towards the end. I have probably eight, um, eight times, eight occasions where I had to break the yarn. Here's an example. Look at this yarn. I don't want that in my fabric. This is a plying issue. Okay, um, again, down here, I've never run into this before with hazelnuts. Look at that one. Can't have that in my fabric. So I have, I'm a little bit like, oh, should I tell, should I tell the dyer? I don't know. Should I tell the store where I bought it? It's amazing yarn. I've knit 
tons of it. I think I may have just gotten a bum, <laughs> a bum big wheel. So I would really like to finish this off, put it in my stash dash, call it done, and cast on my breathing space. I'm very excited to cast that on. So that's it for my works in progress. I do have some spinning. Would you like to see? Oh, where did I put the tag for this? I don't know if I brought the tag for this. Okay, well, I can tell you about it. This is Hog Island from Finger Lakes Woolen Mill. I think it's in New York. And I spun this. This is Hog Island Roving. You guys know about Hog Island? It's a very probably one of the top three most endangered breeds in the United States. It's from, originated uh, on an island in the Chesapeake Bay, eastern shore of Virginia and Maryland. I think it's technically Virginia, this particular, I uh, particular island. And the sheep were brought by the first English settlers and the island was abandoned after a hurricane in the 1930s. Sheep were left behind and they went feral they were eventually moved because of rising sea levels and sorts of desire to conserve this breed. Um, I don't know if you know, but in the Chesapeake Bay, in the past 20, 30 years, inhabited islands have disappeared. Um, yeah. I used to work with a woman from who grew up on one of them. It's real, folks. Okay. So this is Hog Island, and this came... Um, from, I, as I said, Finger Lakes Woolen Mill. I found out about this, I think from either Sarah Pomegranate or Fiber Track, one of the Sarahs, one of the many Sarahs that I call my friend. Um, and this was in true roving form. Hog Island that, you know, I've had a Hog Island fleece before and the, the staples are incredibly inconsistent. Some of them are like half inch and we're not talking, these are, you know, second cuts from the shearer so squishy. So I spun it woolen, which is my happy spin, and I chain plied it, which is possible with a, a true woolen spin. You might, you need to be prepared to have it break a few times and as you're spinning it. But that's just an opportunity to practice your rejoining. So this is a three ply. It's 160 yards from 2.5 ounces. And it smells wonderful. And it's still a little damp. My other spin is this gigantic. This is actually two skeins. Um, I showed the tag for this last time and I've since lost it. I bought this at a fiber farmer's market from Uniquities. This was a like a bullseye bat. A wool, mohair, and nylon bullseye bat, which I three-plied. Very pretty. Uh, out of eight ounces, I have 500 yards. So it's worsted. Um, maybe DK worsted. So I don't know what this will be. It would be lovely as so many things. Yes. Very heathery and gorgeous. What else do I have? That's it for, is that it for spinning? I want to make sure. Hi baby, you're still here. Oh, I finished a fleece prep. You guys want to see? This is two pounds. Oh, there it is. There's a hog island. Finger Lakes Woolen Mill, yes, Genoa, New York. 200 of these sheep registered in the entire world. Ross Farm has a pair. I think they've just, they just had a lamb this year. Their first Hog Island lamb. Mount Vernon has a decent flock. I don't know if Williamsburg has any. All right. Oh, I've gotten thread all over my bats. This was my, there we go. Look at that basket of bats. There we go. And it's full of thread ends from my quilt now. It's like sari silk, right? <laughs> Except not carded in, they're just resting on the top. This was my 2014 Rhinebeck fleece purchase. This is a Corydale Rambouillet. And her name was Opal. I think she was from New York. Don't recall. 
Sarah Gotro has the other half of this fleece. I have spun a skein of this already and I put it in my Enchanted Mesa. So here's a bat. I finished the bats this morning. Um, so yeah, it's roughly two pounds, probably a little less. There's, a, there's the clean side. So this will be spun um, woolen as well. Probably this summer for tour de, a tour de fleece and, excuse me, stash dash meat ridge. Alice is here at my feet. She seems happy. Hi, sweetie. So that is it for spinning, everybody. Um, let's talk about events and then acquisitions and then we are done. Okay, events. What is happening tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. You might know that the Needle, National Needle Arts Association um, big meetup, I don't know if they do this twice a year or once a year, but this spring it's in Washington, D.C. So a lot of needlework, yarny business folks are coming to D.C. And Fiberspace is having a special gathering for um, their best customers. <laughs> And by that, I mean people who have spent a lot of money there. And I happen to be one of them. And so does my friend Leanne and my friend Sarah. And so we are going to, we were invited to a special um, evening at Fiberspace, champagne, cheese, and chocolate, um, door prizes, gift bags. Um, we are feeling very special. So we are going to go get together and go down to Old Town Alexandria tomorrow. And uh, they're going to have a lot of their fibery friends who are in town for TNNA there as well. So a little bit of hobnobbing, what what? That sounded so dorky. Then Saturday, the three of us are getting together at my place because these ladies feed me lunch once a week, almost every week. And uh, I need to pay them back. Not that they require that, but I want to. Um, and the reason we don't come to my house is because it's not really kid-friendly anymore. My kids are blessedly past the age where you need a massive, or not massive, but a room of where you can contain them. And there are toys, and there are not wool combs and unprotected outlets and that sort of thing. My house isn't kid-proofed anymore. Lonely, just sing. Um, but that said, we can't really hang out at my house. On the weekday. Anyway, we're gonna have a dye day at my house. We make some Spanish food. Um, we're gonna dye sock blanks. Andres, you knits. I've been watching you. I got guar gum. I'm gonna thicken the dye. We're gonna stencil. We're gonna paint. We're gonna dye sock yarn. <laughs> Should be great. Um, dye days when I do it with my students are so much fun. So that's coming up. What else is coming up? Um, oh, I did. I never talked to you guys about my Susan B. Anderson class at Fiberspace, the shawl design class. And basically, it was very truncated for me. Um, my son got sick, and he wanted his mommy. Basically, he was thrown up. So I came home. He was with um, a babysitter. I came home after an hour of the class. <laughs> but I got the handouts. I got to see Laura Mahalski from The Knit Shift. I got to see Susan B. Anderson and get about an hour's worth of her knowledge and wisdom. Um, and there are some other people there that I would have liked to talk to and I never really got to. I think there, there was a male podcaster there. Is this isn't Knitting Daddy? And I didn't get to chat with him. Um, Beagle Mom Knitter. I got to say hi to her briefly, but really would have loved to just hung out a bit more. She had all of her shawl designs there, as well as some of Paula Emmons Feasley's. Paula Emmons Feasley's. Um, and it was, it was a great setup and so that's what's coming up. That's what's happened recently. Um, let me talk about acquisitions. I love my knit dress, my dandelion dress. I wear the heck out of it. I ordered some more art gallery jersey for another one. Now it's a big garment. And I'm not sure about wearing 
a big garment that's not dark colored. So this one was on sale, so I got it to try, see how I like it. If I like it, I'm getting this other floral one that's sort of pink and orange and cream tones to it. Oh, honey. There's a big gust of wind and she's shaking. So that is going to be made this weekend. I don't know when. Um, oh, I got these amazing minis and I may not have them all. And I actually, I put them in my minis basket and then realized, and then I rummaged around, I may have mixed them up. But Aspen Snapdragon, you are so lovely. You sent me these beautiful minis. I know for sure that this one is for you, from you. Love that. Look at these gorgeous things. Um, and they will definitely be knit, at, knit into my blanket when I get back to it. Who knows what. Um, okay, I have the latest Highland Handmaid's Fiber Club. So, if you haven't received your yarn or your fiber, you don't want to, and you don't want to see it, turn away. Um, I don't know why. Have you probably gotten it by now? This is a superwash merino this month, four ounces, and it's this. It's this. Look at that. Look at that. This is called Colibri, which I believe is like a um, scientific term for hummingbird, Latin Colibri. That's how you spell it. So it's this insane blues and greens. And then once in a while, let me show you, you'll find a speck of pink or, I wanted to say there's, yep, yeah, sometimes a little bit of yellow. <laughs> Heather, this is gorgeous. This is so gorgeous. I hope she has more superwash target too. I really love that. All right, so I went to Loop Yarn Works for the first time, for the last time, probably for the summer, because I treat myself every, I don't know, once a month, twice a month, I hang out there, and sometimes I buy stuff while I'm waiting to pick up my daughter from school. Yeah, I bought some things. This is Danica Studio, it's a linen, Cosmetics bag. Could also be a project bag and narwhals. Just had to. And I've got a new to me yarn, which is um, a Canadian dyer. Oh, I remember why I got both, because I had um, I had racked up a discount. So I, I bought two things. <laughs> Kaleidoscope Dye Works, Prismatic Color, Incredible Yarn. This is Aphrodite's Tears, Endlessly Soft Sock and Shawl Yarn. This will probably be more like in the shawl variety. 20, 80, 20 um, Merino Superwash Nylon, 426 yards. I think I need to open this up. Be very careful. There we are. It's lovely. And I just kind of couldn't resist. Ugh, oh, get right there. This would be really fun on its own or with something else. So a new yarn to add to the stash, which I had initially put this back on the shelf thinking, you don't need another random sock yarn. You don't need another random sock yarn. But then they told me I had the 15% discount. So I got another random skein of sock yarn. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. So almost done with the acquisitions. Actually, there's quite a lot more. And I got an amazing sampler of goodness from Serenity Farms. This is in Michigan. Um, you guys, You guys, guys, look at these. These are from, this is yarn from their sheep. Um, 
The Moret is a Bond Corydale cross. Apparently they have a lot of very old bloodlines. Um, Silver Lake. This is a Corydale from two other sheep, Francie and Dawn. Uh, let's see. This is natural black Corydale and alpaca. And this might be Corydale. I might have gotten these two mixed up, name-wise. They're just gorgeous. So I got the yarn. Let's take a step back. Let's go back in the process. Also from Serenity Farms. Let's see, do they have a website? Yes. Well, they have a blogspot. Serenity-farms.blogspot.com. So these are a spinning sampler. So Corydales, Coopworth, and some of them have Angora. They're stunning. I don't want to take them out because it says what they are by row. So, Ooh, so pretty. And then, shall we go back in the process just a wee bit more? <laughs> smell of this package when I opened it. Insane. Yes. Look at these locks. They're in little sandwich bags. I have since messaged her. She's Granny Sheep on Ravelry. Is that right? Yes, I think so. I have since messaged her, messaged her and I'm like, can I buy a fleece next year? Look at that. This one is Kimber. Three-year-old Corydale U. She says it's traditional crimp. I'm really not sure what that means, but I like it. Then we have, these are raw. These are raw locks. This one is Hilda, a five-year-old Corydale. Faint crimp, great color. And she's right, the crimp is not as quite as defined. That's Hilda. Lovely. I love it's sort of a silvery cream mix. Got a few more in here. Who is this one? So exciting. This one is Murta! Murta! That's an Outlander character. A wonderful guy. Yearling Corydale weather, so that is a castrated male. Ram. Love the variety of color in this one. Murta. Murta. Oh, look. Oh, wow. Wow. You guys are growing some amazing wool in Alma, Michigan. You guys. Wow. One last bit of raw locks. So, yeah, usually I would not buy a fleece sight unseen through the mail. But this sampler has, yeah, I would buy these. Kelly, three-year-old Corydale U soft crimp. Ooh, baby. <laughs> wow. Just stunning. Just stunning. And these tips will come out just fine. Just fine in the wash. They're not crumbly. Beautiful. Lovely acquisitions from Serenity Farm. That was a wonderful discovery. Okay, so Claire from New Hampshire Knits sent me a colorway of Tamar as well, of my choosing, and this is going into my color work library, and it's coming out green. It's, it's really the color of my shirt, maybe a little greener. This is Tamar in the camel colorway. And I think it's just a great shade to have in a color work project. So that will be going in my stash library. Okay, now Shop Teasel, Kimberly, a friend of mine from Seattle, she just, she spoils me. Let me show you what she sent. These amazing cards from Unraveled, Inc., unraveled.com. A friend of hers who takes these fiber inspired pictures and these are just amazing for swap packages you guys amazing 
I'm, I'm putting together a swap package right now, and there's one of these in there. She also sent me, she by mistake bought two copies of Spin Off, which is just cracking me up. Oops, I just dropped some of these out of here. And sent the second one along to me. Ooh, mad for poonies. Um, so I'll be reading that. I don't typically get Spin Off, but I'm excited. Now, speaking of poonies, she went mad for poonies and made, you guys, an insane amount. Okay, I'll take them all out and show you. These all have silk, I can feel. I don't know. Yeah, there's a heavy amount of silk in these. Kimberly! This must be two ounces, at least. Beautiful, beautiful. Haven't spun a good poony in a long time. These will coming out. These will be coming in my travels this summer. Um, she also, you know, Kimberly spins her own embroidery floss, and she sells it on her shop, Teasel. We might skip dive team tonight, because those little kitties are gonna freeze with this wind, waiting to have their turn off the diving board. Okay, she spun embroidery thread. Let me just, I shall have fun. Yes, I shall. I need to get back to my drop cloth sampler, you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more. This is the last thing. So I have designed a cowl with Kimberly's naturally dyed yarn. We were discussing how a gradient would be pretty fantastic. <sighs> she blows me away, you guys. So this is Merino from a shepherdess near her. I think it's called a, I'm not gonna commit this to memory, Abundant Earth, I hope. This is all naturally dyed, and this is going to make an amazing, amazing cowl. We're going to be offering kits later on, summer slash fall, for this design, and I could not be more excited because her yarn truly, like I've knit with it, it's addictive. Cochineal, lac, which is, a, these are both from insect-based dyes, natural dyes. Then we have cochineal plus weld. I think weld is usually a yellow color. So you mix these and you get these amazing shades. Matter root. Matter with less intensity. And kutch, which is a plant. And then for the interior, she has sent this fingering weight, beautiful, squishy, lovely merino. So it's a lined cowl. Um, I designed mine with like a kid silk haze kind of thing, but you could do really any sort of skinny lining that's luxurious. And merino is quite luxurious for next year's skin, so love it. Love it. I love my friends. <laughs> I love wool. I love that you guys sat with me for almost 50 minutes. I usually don't talk for this long. Um, so yeah, I hope you all are well. Did I get everything? Let me just look. Hey, Alice, you want to come say goodbye? Cookies. Come here, sweet potato. Oh, do I have a cookie? It's not bad. And a baby. Come here. This is my little loaf of a dog again. Okay, chill, chill, chill. Dong, 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 dong. There we go. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Oh, you dropped a piece. So we will say goodbye to you for now. And you all take a. There's a baby bird watching us. <laughs> Must be confused by all the wind. He's just walking around on my patio. Hey, that's it for the cookies. So you'll take care and we'll see you next time. Bye.